civilization. Hellenic civilization is classical Greek. Uh, uh, Hellenistic civilization is the civilization of Aristotle, uh, of Alexander the, the Great. A melding of Asian and Greek civilization in a kind of new cosmopolitan format. So this is what he was trying to do, and he was quite successful, even though he was just a young kid. He was, I think he was about 17 or 18 when he started. I think, he, I think basically he was killed in his early 30s. I don't think he was more than 32 years old when he was, when he was either assassinated or died of his wounds or whatever. So these things all end with Alexander the Great. So when he would die in, in 323 under secure circumstances, his empire that had just been conquered, from the Persians. And the Persian king ran and left the field, and there's a lot of stuff on the History Channel about that that's really good stuff. And there's some, have had a lot of presentations of Alexander and his campaigning where he uh, rides uh, uh, behind the Persian lines while his other generals are attacking the front, and he, he, uh, he goes after the actual Persian king who's sitting in his camp, and you know, it's just like petrifying for the Persians to see this crazy kid riding at the head of a band of cavalry that are out of their minds with uh, warlike enthusiasm and they all break and run and the whole Persian army runs after them. That's how he conquers his, his empire. I mean, he's fighting against odds that are like 10 to 1. And just quite incredible military leader and very audacious. But that empire is only ephemeral. It just came in a moment and it's gone. But it lasts to some extent in that Mainland Greece is one part of it. That's one of the kingdoms. Asia Minor, where Paul is working with Iran, is another part of it. And then the two other parts are Syria, which extends up into Persia, and Egypt, where Alexander had some interesting experiences with the gods down there, who he claims greeted him as a son of God. In fact, it's Alexander is one of the first people to promote this idea that he is the son of God, that he's not actually the son of his father, Philip. So as we get into Christianity, this becomes more and more important that the ruler has to be a son of God. But Alexander goes to one of these oases, it's called Silwa in Egypt where he makes a trip for 30 days by himself where he greets the ram god in Silwa and supposedly the ram god told him that he was his son. And he promoted this ever after that he was, you know, that's where he was amalgamating all the different deities together. Alexander's a really interesting story. If you've never read it, you should read it. You'll find it in uh, lots of different books from that period that were written about Alexander. You can always Google it up and find it, but I think uh, Plutarch will have material about it, and um, uh, some of the other Greek historians uh, celebrate all these events in his life. I think there was a guy who started with A, I can't remember the, his, his, his name, but it will come to me, who wrote, I think it's Appian or something. Anyway, he wrote The Life of Alexander. And uh, there are several Greek uh, Roman lives of Alexander. So, it's really interesting. It's better than reading about, you know, Madonna or something like that. So, the two generals that inherited the kingdoms of Syria and Egypt, which are the areas we're interested in this course and in the Middle East, we're not really interested in the Greek kingdom or the Asia Minor kingdom per se. The one who inherited the Syrian kingdom was known as Seleucus. He's one of Alexander's generals. The one who inherited the Greek kingdom was known as the Ptolemy. Now, who was the last Ptolemy? Cleopatra. Now I know people like to portray these as African queens and so on. These are not African queens. These are Greek queens, and there's pictures of her mom on coins, we know what she looked like. 
the one that I've seen, she's a scrawny little sort of, you know, ugly creature, but she might have been overgrown <laughs> by the time that particular coin was minted. Maybe she was better looking in her younger days, because she had a lot of success with uh, men. I mean, she obviously knew something we don't know. Uh, <laughs> because uh, she got Caesar, I know, and got him before when she got him. And she got pregnant by Caesar, and she had a child by Caesar. And that's where you all get this, as I told you, I think, if I didn't, I'll tell you now, Caesarean section from, you know, his name was Caesarean, and he was supposedly born in that manner, i.e. by, you know, not normal birth, but surgical uh, intervention. So that's where you get Caesarean from, the name of Caesar's son from, from um, Cleopatra. Why are they all trying to plug in, literally, can be crude and vulgar to Cleopatra because she re represented to them the legacy of Alexander the Great. If they can plug into that legacy figuratively and spiritually, uh, you know, they were getting somewhere. And that's why the Romans were really upset about Caesar and Cleopatra. And one of the big reasons for his assassination, so you can date these things pretty good is because they thought that he was going to make Cleopatra a queen over them, and they didn't want an Egyptian, or I guess they didn't realize she was Greek, but in any case, they didn't care. They didn't want an Egyptian queen, and they didn't want a monarchy uh, that had an Egyptian descendant as their emperor. And he was assassinated when he brought her to Rome. Probably would have been assassinated anyway, but he was assassinated when he brought her to Rome. And that actually triggered the end of the Republic, because Mark Antony's activities, as Shakespeare has written them up in the play Caesar, which you have read in high school, right? They still force you to read that, don't they? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Hamilton and Julius. We used to have to read Caesar and Macbeth. I don't like Macbeth, I admit. You still read Macbeth, and you don't read Caesar? I read Caesar. Caesar is probably <laughs> Caesar for our purposes is the most important of the plays, but that doesn't mean Shakespeare is accurate, but at least it gets you into the subject. So uh, Mark Antony turns the thing around against the Republicans, and then Caesar's nephew, which was recently featured in this series Rome they had on HBO, which is a really weird uh, presentation, but historically speaking, it's useful acquaints people with what was going on anyway in one way or another. They turned it into an upstairs, downstairs, uh, you know, melodrama soap, but uh, with a little bit of uh, blue porn in it. Uh, but as